Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, no, I can't be, I can't do it. Welcome to the stream, guys. I'm sorry, I can't do the intro again. I just don't have the same enthusiasm for it. Apologies Chat. for those that didn't hear the intro. But we're here, we're live now, and we're doing it. We've got two poker superstars going head to head today. Who's your money on, Henry? Well, you know who my money's on. Tell the people. Fatal Holes, Crown Up Guy is going to. Listen, he adjusted really well against. Uh... Kevin Rabichel last week, and he was down like three buy-ins, then got down to zero, then he was down three buy-ins again, then got back down in a 49k profit nice. win. Hey. So we, we would listen to this guy, we we're down to the final 30 hands, right? right? Kevin's up like 2k, 30 hands to go. Are you, what? Yeah. And then That's Fedor cool. ends up winning 49 Gs. How like, did that happen? Did he just put on a clear last 30 hands? Did he run really good? Well, Four bet pot, kings against jacks, jack okay. high flop. They're Ooh. like 270 effective. GG's Ooh. Kevin Rabichow. Yeah. Big pot uh, development on scramble eggs here as Mikhail Suris is in the time bank on the river. Let's call the action. Mikhail with a small lead so far today, 17 hands in. He doesn't go all in, he goes for around about 80% pot. Chunky bet. Blue flush draws brick in. We get a call and we get Jack High versus Pocket Aces. Mikel electing to bluff his diamonds on the straight completing river. And Fedor saying, I didn't come all this way to fold aces. Flicks in the call. I see that the river, nice. pal. Yes, very nice hand for Fedor. Very good start from him. Yeah, I quite like doing, uh, oh, I tell a really fun story one. Uh, Vegas 2019. Okay. Um, we went to Caesar's Palace for pre-drinks before we went to... Is it Omnia that's just next to the poker room in Caesar's? I think it is. It's a nightclub. Are you familiar with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went, went there for pre-drinks. We got absolutely blotted. So we went to Omnia. I came out of Omnia at 7 in the morning, really drunk. Went and sat at a poker table. And didn't leave until about eight nine p.m. Uh, big 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 pot brewing, by the way, on get tucked. Let's have a little look and see. Uh, snap call. Cool. Two pairs. Snapped off. That evens things out. Does Later doesn't it? Now only up around about two k. And one a.m. case. Hey, players can learn a lot from Jacoon about perspective and temperament, etc. I couldn't agree more. It's absolute pleasure listening to some of the podcasts and uh, you know, stories that Jason has shared in the past, and uh, can see why you know some of the guys at the top of the the food chain, if you will, in poker are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of it does just come down to to you know mindset and. Just the, the, that gorilla mindset that, you know, Jason, Phil, you know, just to name a few of the players that come to mind that just seem to have that. Nick Shulman, another yeah, person that just seems absolutely. to have that gorilla mindset. Absolutely, yeah. A lot of, uh, I'm sure we could all relate to this, but there are a decent number of poker players out there who are um, they're weird guys. There's no other way to say it, but it's, uh, it's good to see people make it to the top who have a little bit more awareness about how to be social at the table etc there's nothing worse in vegas every summer you've got all these guys who just grind online all the time they come and they just make their games boring and it makes the recreational players not enjoy it so it's good to see a bit of table talk on the, the tv tv games etc yeah yeah for sure man got a big pot developing by the way jason you able to tell us a little bit about your results in the big game um yeah i've been reeling a little bit it's been really enjoyable Really awesome to see these big games running again. I see you've been in there a couple of times. As we see a river jam. And uh, if the car count is correct, then Crown Up Guy has made a very ambitious hero call with Ace High. He's gone for it. Mikel has shown him three of a kind. And he pulls in a very large pot, putting him into profit for the day. Jason Coon says, stakes are big. I am up $400 so far. Nice one, man. Congrats. 40% <laughs> of a big blind. Good work. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Just too jealous that you're up 400 k Congrats, man. That's really awesome. Oh, man. That was, that was brilliant timing, mate. Well played. Well played. <laughs>
So we've got a hand developing on Kill the Game Bane. So we're going to finish that hand. And then when you're ready, text me your answer privately. Okay. And then we'll let people in the chat start guessing. We'll do some 20, some 20 euro giveaways. No problem. As I say, a four bet and then a C bet. I feel like uh, yeah. one third C bet. I think I'm a tiny bit behind. Oh, I see it now. I see the river now. That is some river. It's going to go check, check. Unless Fedor Alex to go for some sick thin value. I think he's just going to check it back, though. He elects to bet. Uh, 6,700 behind. I mean, uh, Mikhail, we get, get to this river. Yeah. We just can't fold, right? Can't fold. Too many ace fives, etc. Although, having said that, a lot of his four bets do contain some king x, like king five type hands. He does. See red or value yeah. back up a little there. It's unfortunate for the prince. Mikhail oh. up a buy and a half. For those of you that don't know, Henry and I have a little friendly bet every time we're both in the booth. The tune of around about 100 Great British Pounds. My money is on Mikhail this evening. And he's doing very well so far. Oh, so Jason, just before he's uh, tagged out, he's just letting us know in, this, in the chat that the story, we played a tourney in Asia together. I told her when she came to WSOP, she could be my tag team teammate. That is amazing. That was incredible. <laughs> that she is brilliant. Absolutely love it. That was incredible. That was a really good vibe. Uh, have you ever played the tag team event? I haven't. No, I haven't, I haven't played any. Uh, well, I played one WSOP event. Wow, what a run out, man. This is insane. So Thuris turns the nut straight. On table hit <laughs> Fedor Rivers the better straight. This this the super nut straight. Yeah. And I'm assuming this is this just snappy. Oh, kind of sucks it's that we unblock there. clubs and we block hearts, but I I'm very surprised we haven't called yet. Maybe just assessing all those options makes a lot of sense. I have a fun story to tell you, but I'll tell you after this one. Yeah, let's, uh, wow. Yeah, 13.6k pot going Fadal's way. So down about what? A buy-in 1.2 or so. Okay, let's see if that. Very fortunate over for Fedor. Yeah, that spicy run out. Right, let me just have a quick look. See, because I saw some guesses straight off the bat that were very close very to close. yours. So Gazi messaged me privately. He reckons yeah. it's going to be 3,232 entrants into the WSOP main event next year. I so, uh, what is Carter too tired said 3,300. He was the first one to say 3,300. Uh, see if anyone beats that. So, he's off by 68. Electro Bowl, you should play the lottery this weekend. Genuinely 100%. If you're able to guess the river, you should be playing the lottery if you can, mate. Get your lines on. Wow. Diamond Apple saying 3369. Not a bad guess, my friend. Uh, Hero Value said 3200. Fadal's River 2 pair, and he's about to lose another massive pot. 27,900 euro pot going through its way. Now up two and a half buy-ins after. It did a pretty good job of uh, chipping away. At Chowren's lead, and in the space of one hand, it's, uh, you should be playing it's all gone back. Can, Fair play to like Fedor, he's taking it well with his smiley emoji in the chat there. You'll love to see it. <laughs> okay, I'll throw one right back at him. Oh. Right. Food. Hey. Ordered. We have a Good very large pot. Mikhail Thuritz has ace nine. Crown of guys, queen high. So we're going to see a bet in a fold here, I would imagine. So Mikhail is starting to turn the screw a little bit. I think it's safe to say he's been on the right side of variance so far this evening. He's done quite well on that front. As we see, Crown Guy make a quick fold. And we move on to the next hand. Mikel closing in on being up three buy-ins for the session. Mm. 
if you see someone's card live and don't tell them, does this stay on your conscience questions of both of you? It's a very interesting question. I always, always, always tell someone that I've seen their cards. And then they always say, oh, why are you looking at my cards? And it's like, don't peel them like a fucking moron. Man. Don't <laughs> your fucking face. So apparently the right, I, I, I just tell them regardless how many, how many times. But apparently the right thing to do is you tell them the first time you've seen them. And the second time, mid-hand, you announce what they have. And then after that, if they keep showing you their cards, then yeah, I so... personally just tell them. Like every time. Yeah, great. Agreed. Like, tell them, and then, you know, if they keep it, because I've, you know, you get a lot of VIPs in PLO games. Yeah. Um, you know, people that have to hold up all four of their cards and they're sat right next to you. And sometimes, you know, you just be ordering something from the waitress or, you know, mm-hmm. talking to someone at the table, and yeah, you just see their cards and you just let them know. And it, it's, it's up to them to protect their hands at the end of the day. Like, it's it's unfair on you if you have to like misplay a hand or not get involved because someone else has like continued to make a mistake. Yeah, for sure. Predictably to say, as we see, crowd guy get there on the river. Oh, table get tucked. Flush completes on the turn. And a very disguised straight gets there on the river. And Mikhail Thuris is going to have a tough decision to make here when Federal likes the better river. Now we've seen some 60% sizes with some marginal holdings. And he goes a little bigger with a stronger hand here. And Mikhail absolutely snaps him. You certainly can't begrudge him that with an overpair there. And it's a very nice hand for Crown Up Guy. So he was playing in the, the big game at the Vic, the 1025 PLO. Yeah. And there were two or three players who were quite literally passing cards to each other under the table mid-hand. Right. And they were, like, working together, and they got away with it for a couple of days. And they only what? got caught with some old-school pro. Apparently, they were, like, really, really good at it. They were really seasoned pros at what they were doing. But they were just, like, wow. passing cards to each other. And then they got chucked out of the floor, and they just, like, claimed they didn't speak English. And they just, like, like no police were called. They just got to leave. Wow, that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. But that, that happened like, was it last year or was it the year before? I think it was last year, but it's it's madness. That was a madness. That they were just like passing cards to each other under the table. Should we try that in Vegas? See how we go. I'd rather not, mate. I don't want to get shot. Okay, if you need the ace of spades, touch your nose and I'll I'll pop it under your <laughs> Sound good? That's insane. Like how how do you even know what the other person needs? I have no idea. But they must be really skilled if they're able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of, yeah, one of the uh, the best lessons you, you can learn from watching the the movie Rounders is you know yeah you, do, you just need to keep an eye out for things in, in poker man like just because you know, your integrity is uh, above ground doesn't mean everyone else is going to be oh 100 percent could there are so many scumbags out there as I see the lead cut down to twelve thousand euros. Could all change in one hand. Oh, and get tucked. Fedor rivering a flush. Ooh. There is rivering trips. Oh, baby. 1,500 in the very middle. Big bet from Mikhail Turrets. And we are going to see an all in from Fedor Holtz, I'm sure. Although, yeah, I think we see a jam. Yeah, always jamming for value here. I think so. Yeah, let's go for it. What does he elect to do? Given he's polarized himself and then Fedor is jammed over the top of him. Fedor super polarizing himself. It's a very impressive pull from from the Celtics. Oh, this is an interesting pot developing on Get Tucked. As we see, bottom two for Fedor. He will be raising this, particularly versus this small size. The smaller the C-bet, the more frequently we raise. And on the flip side, the higher the C-bet, the less frequently we raise. So he's going to raise this all the time. I would not be surprised to see a 3-bet here from Mikel at some frequency because he knows that Fedor is going to check raise in 10x. Sometimes like King-10 and Ace-10 and things like that. It's quite an interesting turn card. One of Fedor's main bluffs, 5-6, has just improved. And if you ever check raises a hand like Queen 5 of Hearts, for example, he's picked up a lot of equity. As we see Fedor bet this very polarizing sizing here. I don't think Mikel can ever fold the turn. He's reducing the call. Backdoor flush completes. 
I'll be curious to see what Federer elects to do here and to see how Mikel responds to that. It's going to be a very interesting spot for both players on the river. I don't think we ever see a check here from Fedor. I think we're always going to see a bet because he can't really ever check call because Mikel doesn't have very many bluffs at all here. He would have to hand up, turn a hand like you know seven five or seven six until bluff, which is just so unlikely. So we do indeed see a bet from Fedor. It's a very tough spot now for Mikel. What does Fedor check raise the flop with? Bet the turn with, and then bet this value heavy two third sizing with. We do see a call, and Kranich guy is going to pull in a very nice pot, 14k, 7k profit for him that one hand, which brings the deficit all the way down to a measly 6,000 euros. Fedor with the overbet. We're on table. Kill the game, Bane. It's in the tank. Deep in the tank. He does let it go. <laughs> Just make people write giveaway and whoever wins gets timed out for a week. Uh, five six nine pokes. I guess holds the score of the five hundred hand mark. That's a that's a good shout. I like it. I like it. But I would have to do a lot of scrolling. I'd have to do a lot of scrolling. Chep Zilla said, "Most awkward story of poker player flirting with a dealer." Yeah, those they they can be awkward. It's especially awkward when you're at the table as well, and you're just like witnessing someone try to be funny and flirt. And you're just like, nah, that's that's not it, bro. That's not it. Okay, I'll go for the quarter pot. Fatal putting him in. I'll get tucked. If he does, cool. Be a 30,000 euro pot. Side off the hand, around about 15k effective. Looks like he's going to have to have a think about this one. One in the chat, if you think he's going to call two, if he's going to fold. Too late. Fedor taking down a decent size pot up to 55k on the table, get tucked up around about a buy in now. Are you guys talking about me? We were. We were. We were talking about how you're going to come up with the best Lod and Thinks question. You're going to ask me, and then we're going to do another giveaway. Time's good, mate. One second, one second. No worries, man. Take your time. Take your time. So I, I went to the other side of my house and uh, sat in the kitchen and I could hear your voice like as if you were sitting right next to me, which made me realize that everyone in my house can hear everything. So I need to just not be as loud. So have you not got a headset? No. Uh, no. No. All right. When's your birthday? <laughs> the 18th of January. All right, still a long way away. Well, chat, he's a streamer and he doesn't have a headset. Headsets are for girls. Have you got one? Yeah, of course. Wow, snapped. <laughs> snapped. Mikhail taking down a 20k port courtesy of that two outer on the river. Oh, what did I miss? Back to evens. Yeah, I am a little behind, so I'm going to get... Oh, I just saw it. Back to Ethan's. Gail clicking the few button and Fatal was just like, lol. Lol. Nice little, nice little two outer. I don't Get want to punched by Phil Ivy. Yeah. Hey, how much would you have to be paid to be punched he's, in the face by Phil Ivy? He's, I mean, he's, he's not that. He's not, he's not like tanked. Yeah, he's, so he's not. Like, I don't know, like 100k? I'd probably take less than that, to be honest with you. Yeah, as well as that, it's a fucking great story, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A crown up guy turning his uh, six blocker into a bluff, Mikhail with the two pair. Back up to a buy in and profits. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is a good sign. This is a good four bet pot. Let's go. 
Oh man, I'm gonna sweat this so hard if Mikhail yeah, like just, just pop it, just pop it to four point six. Oh, he's just cold. Oh, that's not our board. Oh, it's ten. Oh, nine. that's not our board. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> Job has said, I doubt anyone can get 50k ahead. Once they are 30k ahead, they can just fold to victory. I uh, faith. Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. Uh, Phil Dalfond, you have just made my life complete. Thank you very much. That's very kind. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Just just check Twitter, mate. <laughs> Henry, Henry, listen, listen. That's the sound of second place. Just nothing. Just yeah, just there you go. I have no idea what you're talking about. Just check for that on Twitter and then. Just... Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm great commentary from Gazzy and Henry Kilmeade <laughs> too in that old. That's <laughs> you know you know why that is, Gazzy. It's because me and Phil are, are friends. Like we're we're right. on like good terms, and he like you're the person that he can't like rip into that much. No, I think it's because he just likes me more than you. To be honest. Um, nah. Nah. Okay. We'll never know. And even if it's a 10k swing, that's a nice hundred of. I'm about to lose like four hundred and fifty dollars, six hundred dollars on stream. These are some very big pots development. I'm curious to see what Crownout guy wants to do on the river here with the Queen of Spades blocker. Takes his showdown. Takes his showdown. And so, he has call, bet called the turn. For the nice king, I think he always calls river here on the deuce. This is massive. In all seriousness, this is massive. I'm really curious to see how quickly it calls. Why did I have to get big headed? It's just phenomenal. Chat, this is just, I'm just so happy. Phil Dalfon has tweeted at me, and Henry Cobain's about to owe me like 200 bucks. This is just fantastic. 200 bucks? It's going to be more than that just from this hand alone. Oh, is it? I didn't <laughs> okay. know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man this match has been absolutely fantastic it's been really enjoyable as we see a three bet on the flop from the Cal Durrits with the King 6 taking it down fantastic Mikel has gone on an absolute tear he has waited until Gazi has cross booked and he has gone on a tear my man Oh man, why did I have to open my mouth? I could have said it five hands later and saved myself 200 bucks, but no. It's all good, mate. Don't worry about it. It's all the money. You're right. You're right. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Like, it's, I'm paying you of your money anyway, so. Oh, keep talking, mate. Keep talking. It's going to be a lot more than the measly amount of money that you want, mate. <laughs> I believe. I believe in the fade is going to win a 50,000 euro pot on table, get tucked, and then you are going to get tucked. That's what's going to happen. Uh, do you think if we go to Vegas, filled up on the meters for some one two payload on some beers? <laughs> I think we could convince him. <laughs> I think we could convince him. I think I'd actually rather be far, to be honest. Her Instagram content is hilarious. That content is funny. Particularly during the golf on challenges, it's so fun. Yeah, but then, like, Spencer just outshines both of them anyway, so... Yeah, I guess, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. The, the Spencer content is the content that I live for. Yeah. Spencer content, is that where it's at? Just, like, head first into their fountain. Just like, just like oh, yeah, I'm not going to the kitchen to <laughs> get a glass of water, I'm just going to drink straight out of the fountain. <laughs> wow, Thuritz puts on the cape. Jeez, oh, what a call that was, that's fantastic. Hey, we got the chance for a 60k pot on table get tucked. And since we've cross booked, these boys have like turned off the heat a little bit. I yeah. feel like it's, it's possible. 60k pot is. Can, can I buy out the cross book, please? I've just realized how much that is. Uh... Wait. Can I buy out the cross book? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to just GG the crossword right now and you can just owe me what you owe me <laughs> uh, no man I'm, I'm running good recently so okay, what, I feel what, like what, what 5% of 20k it's like $300 so far I'm up as Henry is just a little bit too 
as we do see a check raise here from Crown Guy. Yeah, it's obviously never going to work. It's not going to work against that hand. That is an interesting river, though. I think we're going to see a big bet here at a very high frequency from Fedor, unblocking both flush draws. The only bad blocker he has is a nine. I think it's just going to get, get snapped three. off. No, I think this is going to get through more than you think. Really? But, I mean, what's he check-raising on the turn that is, is still comfortably betting this river? Good question. He was really only repping a deuce. Yeah, I think this is going to get picked off. Ace-X of clubs is going to check-call. Yeah, can't have Ace-X of diamonds. Yeah. King-Jack of clubs? Uh, probably three bets pre or three bets swap. Or, or yeah. sorry, three swap. And Mikel does make the call to put another nail in the coffin of Federer Holes, extending his lead to a cool 30,000. 32,000. So for those that don't know, Henry, when he was 21, 22, and he had his 6,000 euro bankroll or whatever it was, thought he had killed the game and changed his, uh, referred to himself as Kill the Game Bane, which is a play on his surname. But unfortunately, he didn't kill the game of crossbooking for him. Which is why Gazavi has swooped in and uh, a few bucks off of him tonight. I've got Queen 5 versus 6 uh, Oh my god. What is that turn card? Am I way behind? What's that? No, just the card cam just caught up. Oh, okay. So. So, yeah, I'm going to be sending you 750 quid after this stream, yeah. <laughs> so the King Art River's just hit, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Fader's, Fader's about to jam and get snapped. Utterly snapped. A bit of a side jam from Dirt on that river, but he's never folded, obviously. Snap. Oh, okay, it was Queen 5. It was showing, uh, showing Jax for a moment. Either way, uh, Mikel has run very, very well for the past 150 hands or so. 150 hands? Well, for the past however many hands when we crossbooked. Crown nice on the spot. sale, uh, 1.3k while crossbooking. You said there's no way it'll be 50k. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. I did indeed. <laughs> I, I, I regret my decisions. You love to see it. You love to see it. Sorry, we, we, we had a had a good morning session chat, so Oh. Free roll then. <laughs> yeah, but it's still annoying. I was really pumped and I'm just giving you seven hundred and fifty quid. Hey. <laughs> Mate, I'm not bad for you. Pay paying for your flights to Mexico. All right. <laughs> Interesting spot here for thirds. So I think we're gonna see a jam here from Fedor. Three bet pop, flop goes check check. Check yeah, yeah. interesting spot having the queen of clubs. Yeah. Although not having the queen of hearts. I think this is going to get paid off, you know. I think this is going to get called. Interesting to note that uh, Fedor doesn't jam. He likes to yeah, bet. Yeah, he does. does oh. call it off. Nice answer. I'm going to see a four bet pot. On table, get tucked. Fatal three betting the ace four. And I think this close to the finish line is not going to go anywhere. He's going to try and turn things around with just 41 hands to go. He's going to try and pull off another last minute comeback. Similar to the one pulled off against. Kevin Rabichow. Don't forget, boys and girls, tomorrow we'll be back for our first third match of the Legend Showdown. So after today's match has concluded, everyone would have played two matches. We're going into the final stage of the group stages, if you will, or the opening round. Boyfin against Kevin Rabichow. Boyfin, who is 0 for 2, down 37k. Kevin is currently sat in third. 
But as things stand, we'll be sat in fourth. Be really important for him to do a win. And 17k in the middle. Based on the turn on table, get tucked. Baby. What did I miss? I think we're about to see a 45k pot. Ah. I mean, we'll take it. Just checking that one down on the river. Listen, man, you're going into your third batch uh, next week, this time next week, against the, the opponent that is currently ranked number one, Phil is me. He's yeah. two for O. How are you going to be prepping for that one, mate? I mean, it's really difficult to, to prep for me because uh, I think the best way to prep for me at this point, I'm not going to get super, like, way much smarter strategy-wise. Yeah. So uh, for me, it's really mostly about being a good state of mind, um, being focused, you know, eating well, being being um, healthy and fit. So that's more the thing I'm looking for right now. Mm. Um, because I'm not going to get, you know, as m much better in the week. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, away from the Legends showdown, it must be a good time for you with uh, all the online MTTs going on right now. Are you keeping busy with that? Yeah, I mean, that's been going really well. Um, so, I mean, that's my main game where I come from. And so I love playing these games because it's in tournaments. Um, there's obviously stuff to study and I know quite well where to look at and, and how, where to improve. Um, also because more of my my crew is, is playing tournaments. But uh, I love playing other formats. I've always loved that um, because now I'm realizing, you know, 200 big blinds deep, uh, four-bit pots. Mm -hmm. uh, then you check raises turn, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Puts you in the meat grinder, as you say. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you very much for coming on. Not a lot of people would be happy coming on and chatting after losing five buy-ins, so props to you. Um, the, the match was really entertaining tonight. We both really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm sure I speak for all the chat, and we say thanks very much. It's, it was uh, a really cool game tonight. Sure. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, yeah best of luck, obviously, in, uh, in your third match of the Legends Showdown. I believe you are now in third place. So, I mean, you know, in, in, with a good chance Maybe. of uh, <laughs> yeah, getting through. I mean... The final. Is not gonna, not gonna make it easy, I guess. So. Yes, it's true. It's gonna be a very tough one. But as you say, it's it's all part of the challenge, so it's it's all yeah. good. I, uh, I'd just... love to make it to the same final, so let's see if that works out. <laughs> Appreciate the fever, man. Once again, thank you so much for for joining both myself and and yeah. Gatti after a, a rough last leg but i'm sure you're going to go into the final match and uh, put on a show for us and yeah, yeah, yeah. boys and girls back home fatal holes joining both myself and gazzy b in the booth we're back tomorrow for the first third match that's a bit of a mouthful but between <laughs> uh boyfriend and kevin rabichow at 7 p.m central european time gazzy thank you so much for joining me my man it's been a pleasure and see you guys next time thank Cheers, you very much. take it easy